I know everybody says this, but I can't believe it's May. <laughs> I mean, we are in the summer pretty much. It's getting hot here and it's just it just baffles me that we're already here. Today I am going to do my favorite slash roundup of April. So that includes products that I've tried and I've kind of gathered my thoughts and let you guys know which ones are my favorite, which ones I didn't love and which ones were like kind of in between. If you guys are new here, I would love for you to subscribe down below if you enjoy these videos and also give it a thumbs up. It really, really helps out my channel. I will start with the primer and this one right here, Super Goop Glow Screen. This has been a favorite through and through. It has the most stunning glow and it also has SPF 40 and it really helps my makeup last a long time. Uh, it's colorful, like it has a color to it, a tint. And when you blend it in, it just leaves such a beautiful glow. See what a beautiful glow it gives to the skin. It does have a little bit of grippiness to it. It is not super sticky, but it doesn't dry matte. So foundation goes on top of it very, very smoothly and it lasts a long time. I really do believe that this has helped my foundation stay on all day long. I have three foundations that I want to talk about uh, and the first one is my most favorite one and this is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting. This is the radiant not the self-refreshing and this is what I'm wearing today and I am obsessed with this foundation. I love it more than probably most of my foundations. Um, it has a good coverage. It has medium to full coverage. Uh, it has a little bit of a glow, like luminosity. It's not quite as m matte as the other one. I wouldn't say the other one's matte, but this is definitely a little bit more luminous and it stays in place all day long. It is amazing. It does not emphasize any of my lines. It's just so smoothing on the skin and it goes really well over dry skin. It is not too luminous to where like people that are a little bit combo or like oily uh, can't use it. But for dry skin, this, this is wonderful. My next favorite foundation is the Fenty Beauty. This is called Ease Drop Blurring Skin Tint. I have mine in number six. I have used this every day that I want a more natural look. Now you could build this up, or you could get a good medium out of this one, but I just kinda usually put it on my fingers, just slap it on real quick, and do a very, very minimal makeup when I use this foundation. This is a little bit more matte in like a satin finish compared to the Shiseido, and this um, is just more blurring, I would say. I really noticed like my skin being blurred. <laughs> That's a bad comparison. I wouldn't say this is not blurring because this covers more than it look makes your face look perfected. But for a tinted moisturizer or something that has lighter coverage, it does blur and I, I do see that on my skin. So I have absolutely been loving it. I have shade six and I really like it. And yeah, it's, it's a new favorite for sure. And the last foundation that's just okay. It's not my most favorite one. It's the KVD Good Apple Foundation. Uh, I did do, I think, full reviews on all of these foundations. And this is the one that it's more finicky. Um, there's only a certain way I can use it for it to look good. Now, when I initially tried it on, I used a brush and I put it on and wow, the brush strokes were pretty intense and pretty bad. I actually had to take it off uh, and try again. Um, I went with a sponge and that worked so, so, so much better. Now this is full coverage, um, but so are many other foundations. And with this one, if you use too much, it don't look good. And I felt like it lasted pretty well, but it's just a little bit too finicky. I really have to work with it. It's not just going on the skin so seamlessly. For me, it kind of gathered around my brow hairs or there, so I had to, you know, kind of try to blend that in even more. And it almost 
just sat on the skin. It never really meshed with my skin. And I felt like I couldn't touch my face because if I did this, it would just rub right off. So this isn't my favorite, but it's not extremely horrible. Horrible. Uh, I will say that every time I wore this, everybody complimented on my skin. So it definitely has a beautiful finish to it. But for me, it just is too much work for me to, you know, use it on a daily basis or consider this a great foundation. Now for concealers, I also have three of them. Uh, my first one is the Charlotte Tilbury Under Eye Corrector. I have mine in the shade medium and this is how it looks like. I really enjoy this. I've used it pretty much every single time I did my makeup. I just dot a little bit uh, under my dark circles and it just helps cancel it. I try not to use a ton because I don't want all these layers under my concealer. So I don't want to give it any more reason to, you know, kind of get into my fine lines, but I do enjoy it. I think it has a pretty big effect on it. Um, I wouldn't say that it's better than my Bobbi Brown one, but I do really enjoy it. I would say they're kind of neck and neck. The Bobbi Brown one is a little bit more emollient than this one, but I wouldn't say that this is like hard to blend at all. So I really like this one. Then another concealer that I've actually been really enjoying is the Tarte Shape Tape, the creamy version. This is in 29N. I have been using it quite often because it has a good medium coverage. It's not quite as full as the Shape Tape, which I like because I don't want just a mask under my eyes, but it has this creaminess to it and a little bit of glow. Uh, it's not too much, and I do set it, but I feel like throughout the day, it still kind of, you know, shows through a little bit. I, I really enjoyed this one more than I thought I would. And the last concealer is the one that it's the newest to me, is the Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. This is definitely a very light coverage concealer. I wouldn't even say that you can build it up to a medium, but for every day, this paired with the Fenty, I really like that pair because this is kind of light and it just gives a little bit more um, coverage under the eyes and also um, it gives a little bit of radiance. This is really pretty. I enjoy it. Sometimes I don't even set it because it's that kind of day when I wear it, like a day where it's very minimal makeup, where sometimes I won't even use mascara. Just just put a little bit of this under my eyes um, and just it makes me look a little bit more fresh. Now on to powders and I did do a review on top five powders that I've tried in the past month or two so I'm not going to stay here long because I will link that video below um, but my most favorite powder is the Kosas powder. This is in Breezy and I have used it today. It's a beautiful beautiful powder for dry skin people. Um, it covers enough and it is a little bit of radiance. It gives a little bit of radiance to your skin but it does set my concealer really really well and I, I absolutely love it. Um, I feel like it does everything that I need it to do. Next one is my Dior powder that I want to talk about. And this is also something that I really enjoy. And I will talk about actually Dior and the Gucci powder together. Now, again, I have a full review and I will show you applications um, in that video. But this Dior one and this one uh, have the same kind of issue. And... I'll show you here. I don't know if you can see, but they both are starting to get a little bit of hard pan. Uh, if you can see right there, and this one is around there. I think this is a little bit harder to tell, but it's kind of there. And it's very disappointing because these are so expensive, mostly the Gucci. I would say the Gucci has less um, hard pan than Dior, but it is worth mentioning. And I know some of you also mentioned that yours also started to get hard pan. Now, I didn't get to the point where I can't use it or I feel like um, I don't get powder on my brush, but you know, it, it is kind of annoying and frustrating when you spend like, what was it, 60 something dollars and this was 40, 50, I don't, I don't even know. But they are beautiful powders. I like them both 
kind of the same. Um, I, maybe the Gucci just a little bit more, but um, they are really beautiful in the skin. They do a great job, but the hard paint situation, mm, I, w I wonder how it's going to look like in like, you know, two months after using them often. So that's my only negative about these powders. Moving on to brows. Need I say more? We're just going to leave it at this. My all-time favorite brow product and that is the gucci i didn't even mention it but i'm just gonna leave it there because i've talked about it way too much moving on to contour slash bronzer i have two to talk about i'm pretty sure i tried more but these are the ones i want to talk about today uh and this is the patrick top bronzer slash contour um this one is in the lightest shade i also have a full review on this one um and this one I like, I don't love. This is that eh, product. Now, um, the actual formula is out of this world. I absolutely love it. I love the contour shade. I already kind of have a dip in there, if you can tell, uh, because I have been using this quite a lot. I just don't love the actual color. Um, the contour is very, very light on me. Now, if I wore this foundation, which is a little bit too dark for me right now, I couldn't use this. That's why I didn't even try it today because it wouldn't show. It's so light. Um, and also it goes the same with the bronzer. Now for everyday contouring, I do enjoy this product. Sometimes when I just like want barely any um, contour, I really enjoy it because it gives just a little shizzle right there. Um, now this one is just, I just don't love the undertone on this one. I feel like it makes me look a tiny bit muddy. It's right there. Well, let me, it's right there. Um, I just think it has a little bit too much yellow in it. Now, if I was extremely fair, like in the winter, I think I, I'm actually going to enjoy this a lot. But um, because I'm a, a slightly slightly more tan now it just it, it clashes a little bit with my undertones however i do think if you're fair it's beautiful and the formula is amazing i'm still kind of using it when i have a very very light foundation like sometimes just to bronze up slightly but it's not my most favorite undertone. I still want to pick that medium shade, but for now, this is all I have, and it's just okay because of the color. Now, these bad boys, these are my loves. Uh, I absolutely love both of them. I really like the light one. I think I can pull it off. It looks really, really beautiful on the skin. Actually, it looks seamless on the skin. And uh, I can wear both shades. I, I'm so glad I have them both. Today, I wore the medium one just because, again, the foundation that I tried, the Shiseido, is a little bit too dark for me. And um, this would work better. But I have used the light one many times and they're stunning. I absolutely love them. I do have a full review on these as well. Um, the, the powders are so, so smooth on the skin. They blend in so easily. Like, you do not have to do anything. You just have to dip your brush in there and kind of slightly um, blend it into your cheek and you're done like it is it is no fuss kind of bronzer and contour and I do like the undertones of the contours as well initially I thought this light one was very gray but it it does look really good on the skin and I thought this one was kind of weird color like a peachy almost but it it really is so stunning on the skin it has the bronzers have this glow to them they are not matte they have a sheen to them and they are absolutely stunning i am in love i have used this probably every day honestly i liked i have a one more bronzer that i forgot about and this is the lila b bronzer i've tried it this is not a new product but i've tried it i want to say three weeks ago could be wrong but this is how it looks like and i am absolutely loving it in the initial application i was i wasn't super convinced that i love it but after using it a little bit more and using it on a day-to-day -day basis like a very simple 
natural makeup, this is perfect. Uh, I use this kind of as an all over sheeny, bronzy-ish look. Um, it is not super intense, it is pretty light, but I like it, I use it everywhere. Like I could use it all over my face and I think it would look really, really pretty. So I do enjoy this one as well. For blush, I have two of them. I'm gonna start with this Lila B blush. This is so tiny, look at that. Um, and this is in B Lovely and this is the color and I am obsessed. I absolutely love it. I think the formula is so, so good. Um, and I did, I am wearing it today. It is seamless. I use it on my lips as well. I've even used it on my eyes. And I think it is one of the most stunning colors. It works so well with probably any look you could do. And uh, I also am obsessed with the formula. It is um, creamy, but um, it is not overly creamy. I did a swatch right here. This is the color right there. It is such a beautiful color. I am obsessed with it, obsessed with it. Now I will compare it to the next blush that I really love. These are the Tower 28. Uh, this is a Golden Hour and Power Hour blush. I will compare it to Power Hour. One of you guys mentioned that, hey, are those like kind of dupes? And um, I, I probably already compared it but i wanted to do it again so this one right here is tower 28 and this one is lila b and as you can tell they are similar they are similar the i would say the biggest difference is the formula this tower uh, 28 is much more pigmented uh, and then the lila b is a little bit less pigmented and a little bit more emollient um, and i would say even a little bit more glowier than the Tower 28 one. The, none of these have any shimmer in them, but they both are a glowy product. But I really enjoy it. I want to say that this one right here, the Lila B, has a little bit more rose in it. And the Power Hour has a little bit more brown in it. Um, I don't know if how much you can tell from the swatches, but... It's very slight, but on the skin, they look similar. Not exactly the same, but similar enough. And then I will also swatch the Golden Hour one. This is stunning. I've been using it, I want to say in the past week, every single day, because I really like the, the glow that it gives, and it's such a unique color. That's the Golden Hour, and isn't that beautiful? Stunning. I love it. I probably should have used it today with my little top we have three highlighters to talk about and the first one is this tiny little pebble from lila b and this is in be enchanting and initially i wasn't so impressed with this one but i have used it a lot i feel like i keep gravitating towards it i keep picking it up and using it on my natural days i really love the formula it is such an interesting formula it is definitely um creamy but it sets like a powder and it becomes and feels like powder on the skin i really really like it initially i thought that it was maybe i put it right up here i don't know how much you can tell but um initially i thought it my i had some little glitters in it but really throughout the day i really never noticed them on my skin i just noticed this beautiful beautiful glow um and i've used it a lot. The next one is this YSL 3D All Over Glow. Uh, now this one, I wouldn't say is straight up a highlighter. It is a glowing powder. So you could use this all over your skin or you could, you know, put it on your high points of your cheeks. Um, and, you know, you could do whatever you want with it. I actually take a really fluffy brush and kind of put it on my forehead, down my nose, just a little bit everywhere not so much in this area but you know what i mean um i think it gives such a fresh look now initially i thought oh it kind of has a little bit of a pink undertone and it's only noticeable in certain lights but um i think i was overthinking it a little bit is this one right here it's more of a peach color so um 
yeah, it's beautiful. I like it. I'm glad I have it. And yeah. And my most favorite highlighter that I've tried is from Danessa Myricks. This is her palette. This is what I'm wearing today. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with this palette because you can really do a super intense look without having texture shown. Um, and you also have so many different options to use and the price is decent $48 for this or something like that um, and I think it is a very very well worth it I would use this when I want more of an intense highlighter this is not a very oh barely there highlighter this is intense so I usually use it when I do more of a glam look or I just want my cheeks to be popping you know so this is what I have on today I try to kind of calm it down with a little bit of the beauty blender that had some of the blush on it and just dabbed it and then all we have left is our eyes and our mascara so for eyeshadows I have one favorite and this is the Pat McGrath palette this is absolutely stunning it's what I have on my eyes and you know it took me a while to get it because I was intimidated by this pink right here and this gold right here. Like they're just not my most favorite colors. However, um, I kind of overlooked all the other stunning colors. And honestly, this pink, I can make it work. I've used it before and looks great. And this gold, I use it more as an accent. So like in the center of my lid or in the inner corner or a certain place like that, I don't usually use it all over my lid just because it doesn't I don't like it with my skin quite that much but everything else is absolutely amazing I love it I mean these colors are are glorious and the formula and the textures you just you just can't you can't dupe Pat McGrath I mean I feel like I can dupe pretty much all the other like brands but her I, I can't and Natasha Denona it's getting there there's some shimmers that I can't I can't do from Natasha Denona but Pat McGrath like I can't even come close so I am really enjoying this palette I am trying to use it more and try to be more creative and dabble into color a little bit because I really like my neutrals so I'm enjoying this look. I feel like it's pretty and it is so easy to do. It, it They blend themselves and I barely have to work at it. Now I did try also this one. I don't want to say too much because I haven't tried it but twice I think and I don't have my full thoughts on it but so far I enjoy it. I thought the quality was great and I really like the colors that I've used but I haven't tried it enough to tell you if this is a favorite or you know some of the shades perform well or not but I will try it more and keep you guys updated. Next is this Rare Beauty eyeshadow palette. Um, this is how it looks inside. I have tried this on camera and this is my just okay product. It is not absolutely my most favorite palette but it is not bad. Actually I thought it performed better than I expected just because I don't know either the layout or the colors put together kind of threw me off but this is just okay i think if you're a beginner you may actually really enjoy it except you know this glitter may be a little tricky to work with just because it has a lot of fallout but if you just do your eyes before you're good to go but the other colors are not too intense like pat mcgrath their her mats can get really intense and her shimmers are pfft, out of this world so for somebody that's a beginner i don't think that i would suggest Pat McGrath for them. I would definitely suggest something like this because you have colors but they're not overwhelming and they're not too pigmented where like they are too much on the eyes you know and I think they perform really well the mattes actually blend very well they're a little bit less pigmented that I usually enjoy but I have tried it multiple times and every time I liked my eyeshadow but I wouldn't say that this is my most favorite eyeshadow palette but it is good 
And the last product I'm going to mention is this Bite Beauty Mascara. This has become one of my favorite mascaras. I do have a negative though, two negatives, I think. Uh, the positive, it gives you so much volume. It gives you length. It separates your lashes. They can become clumpy if you use like three or four layers, but even then it doesn't look too clumpy, like you could still wear it. And I, I really love the volume on this one. The negative. Oh, and there's another positive that it does not smudge. I wear it on my bottom lashes and it doesn't smudge. And I literally have one mascara that doesn't smudge and it's a tubing mascara. So whew, that was the biggest surprise. Um, the negative, the wand is too big. Uh, it kind of gets everywhere and I have had issues, you know, kind of getting it all the way everywhere on my bottom lashes, on my under eyes. And, you know, I do scrape it off. I let it sit there for a few minutes. I try to not scrape it off because I want to, but it'll, it'll scrub right off take a spoolie like this or something and just kind of flake it off and it doesn't ruin anything and then the second con is that I feel like it's already getting too dry on initial application this wasn't out of this world I liked it but on second and third application I think it dried out a little bit and it was stunning I was like wow this is giving me so much volume and um, I really enjoy that however when I tried it today I felt like well I feel like it's getting a little bit too dry and I've only had it for like a couple weeks so I really hope that that is just kind of like oh it's getting a little dry and it stays at this level of dryness and doesn't get too dry but um, you know it is pricey I think it was $28 so I really really hope this won't dry out within a month because that would be very sad it needs to last at least three months for me for it to be worth it and I think those are all the products not many fails not many fails which I am very glad because I spend my hard-earned money on this and I don't want them to be bad products I hope you guys enjoy this video give it a thumbs up if you did and also if you have any ideas or recommendations of videos that you want to see i would love your suggestions down below that way i can kind of write them down and you know start working through those videos so thank you again for being here and i will see you guys in my next video bye